Hi and welcome back to the Armageddon channel. My name is Stuart Garner and today I'm going to show you uh, the rest of our collection of German guns. Starting with the uh, Krupp 10.5 centimetre, then we've got a Pac-40 and then the feared 88 millimetre flat gun. So the 10.5 centimetre uh, howitzer, which is this one you can see behind me here, this one was made in 1940. It's all original, everything works on it as it should, except obviously it's been deactivated, so we can't actually fire a shell. We got this from a uh, collector down south. It was in a pretty poor state when we got it, so we cleaned her up, restored what needed restoring, and uh, she now had got pride of place in the museum. These particular guns were also fitted to the German uh, self-propelled guns called the WASP, or VASP, or whatever they, however the Germans pronounce it. Um, so it's obviously quite a, quite a good bit of kit that would fire a 14 kilogram projectile and I think it would fire at about six and a half kilometers, six and a half miles. So um, quite a range and a very deadly bit of kit. If you can think 14, 14 kilo, kilo, kilogram uh, round coming at you is going to cause a fair bit of damage. Like I say, it all works. Legs spray out, uh, the breech works, traverse works. She's, uh, she's in very nice condition. Now they made just over 12,000 of these and um, it would have had a crew of six and it weighed in at about two tons, just over two ton when it was all deployed. Uh, so quite a, quite a hefty thing to move around and we've been asked before what these things are for. The idea there was you tie a rope to it and then you could have a row of men there and they could pull it in any direction to uh, get it through the mud or whatever. So uh, you can imagine a couple of ton of, uh, of steel needed shifting, you would need a six man crew to do that. In a lot of collections, you'll find that uh, the things don't actually move, but in ours, we do try to get everything so it is back into working condition. So uh, elevation traverses all work nicely. Even the gun sights move. And uh, if it was a live gun, everything works. You can even put a shell in it. So it's, um, it's all good to go. Next we have our uh, Flak 88, one of the most feared guns of World War II. It's a German gun, originally designed as an anti-aircraft gun, uh, but later deployed uh, for tank busting. And even later after that was actually fitted into the feared Tiger tank. One of the most powerful guns actually deployed in World War II and um, could destroy pretty well anything on the battlefield. This old girl had a crew of 10 and uh, would fire up to 15 kilometers uh, horizontally. She was uh, on a, normally fitted on a carriage, uh, which we haven't actually got, but the legs would fold up, wheels that end and this end, and then she was towed by a, usually a big half track. Uh, later on in the war, like I say, they were then fitted into the Tiger tank, and you can imagine the size of the turret that was required, and then the hull of the tank. I think the Tiger tank weighed in at something like 50 tonnes, so uh, compared to our Shermans at 30 tonne, Quite, in, quite an impressive bit of kit. We've uh, heard reports of these when they were used in the desert. The old, the old British crews were saying they could see the shell coming towards them when it was being fired. And that's because they, the, the, the uh, round was traveling at such a speed, it would suck up the uh, dust and actually draw a line of where it was going to. And they reckon they used to sit there and just hope that, the tank, that their tank wasn't the target, but you could actually see the round coming across the desert. This is obviously an empty shell case, but this is, uh, this is the shell that was fired from it. This one is uh, 1944. The actual round itself would then come up here somewhere. But if you remember, I showed you the, uh, the Pac-36 earlier with a very small, very small uh, round. You can imagine the speed and the damage that this, something like this would do to an Allied tank. Very, very feared and uh, very effective weapon. This is one we restored. When we actually got it, it was in a right mess. Um, you couldn't lift those legs up. They'd actually been cut off, um, and we've had to refabricate them and get everything moving. I think it took about a week per leg just to get them moving. Also, the part of the deactivation, it had a great big hole cut in the side there, and another one uh, somewhere up here, and we had to weld them up. It took uh, two of us three days of very near solid welding to do these holes. They were, they were massive, so uh, and now you can't even tell. But yeah, this took us um, about four weeks to restore to, uh, to the condition you see it in now, and a lot of that was just basically freeing everything up. But she all works now, uh, obviously you can never fire her again, she is deactivated, 
but the elevation works, traverse works, legs work. She's, uh, she's an excellent exhibit in our museum. And uh, as you can see, we managed to get it all moving lovely. Very uh, scary sight if you were a, uh, an allied tank crew. We're short of a few bits for it, so if anybody has got the, uh, the gauges that would fit in here, the gauges and dials that would fit in there, we haven't actually managed to uh, get hold of them yet. But other than that, she's pretty complete. Here we have the last of our guns. This is the Pack 40, 75 millimeter or 7.5 centimeter. Uh, started service, I think, in 1941 on the Eastern Front against the Russians and could penetrate any, armored, uh, any armor of any Allied tank right throughout the war, right until the end when it came up against uh, the Sherman Jumbo, which was the up-armored Sherman, uh, which we do happen to be restoring ourselves in the museum, in the workshops at the moment. Uh, very formidable weapon, crew of uh, six on this and uh, a very, very good rate of fire. Weighs in at 1.5 ton, she had a crew of six and it does 14 rounds a, uh, a minute. That was with a good crew. This particular one was built in 1943 and uh, was uh, delivered to the Finns. The Finns uh, obviously didn't use it because she's in absolute mint condition. The tires have, uh, have never seen anything at all. When we got it, it had been, uh, had a hole drilled in here and a pin put through it to deactivate it. Um, but that was it, there was nothing else wrong with it. All we did was strip her down, clean her up, repaint her, and uh, she, was, uh, she was good to go in the museum. Now they made just over 22,000 of these uh, particular guns and like many of the World War II guns, they had a life after World War II. Uh, those documents that show that the North Vietnamese actually used them during the, uh, the Vietnam War. The Pac-40 was mostly used as a towed, uh, a towed gun, which is uh, in the state it's in at the moment, but they also fitted them into, uh, into chassis of obsolete tanks and uh, one example of that is Armada. Um, so it was a, a self-propelled gun, basically. So all the, uh, the gubbins that make it work are over here. You've got your elevation and traverse, and then your, your breech lever. Been here a little while, so it's all gone a little bit, uh, little bit hard to move, but it does still work. And your elevation. And the breech is already locked up, so we can't open that. But uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's in good condition. If you've liked what you've seen uh, so far, then please like and subscribe to our channel. That's the Armageddon channel. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Mm -hmm.